Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming for our sixth annual um, Community Information Day. We've been doing this six times. It's very exciting and it grows. It's very cool. Give it a cheer. Give it a cheer. Fantastic. Very good. It is pretty good. You know, it brings everyone together within the community, which I think is great. And it also brings together a lot of our, our teachers and service providers. We have people from DET. We've got people, yeah, it's probably, <laughs> probably yeah, go, yes, good on you. We have people from um, eye surgeries all over Sydney and New South Wales. We've got um, speakers and we've got patients and their families all over New South Wales. And it's all very pretty. It just brings us all close together. We've got all the key service providers here today for you to have a chat to. So I'm pretty excited about it. So I want to get, I just want to bring out the uh, usual housekeeping stuff. Um, now we've got exits. Um, um, what they do is they're behind me and to my right, to your left, um, follow the signs or someone in front of you should you need to use it. There's a bathroom directly behind me for males and around the other side of the block is females. Uh, if, it's, if you uh, would like to connect to the Wi-Fi network here, um, there's a little sign that's near the door, but for those who can't see it, it's called Biz Castle Ray is the network, and the password is CAST2016 to a capital C. If you need help with that, let me know. There's two breaks today, 11 a.m., 1 p.m., um, 11 a.m. being morning tea, 1 p.m. being lunch. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. We'll do our very best to keep on time today. For um, people who need it, I'll use an audible bell that's five minutes before the end of your speaking time, otherwise I'll visually signal you. The theme for today has three parts. It's got inspire, empower, and educate. And there's three parts because that describes the three parts of the Save Site Institute. One of the questions that's come up in feedback forms from previous years is, you know, we've all, like, you know, as patients, we interact with Save Site, we might see a couple of the doctors or professors, but what does the Save Site Institute do? And what I have today is a special treat for you. I've got Professor Stephanie Watson. Um, she's one of the world's top researchers in her field. And she's also an excellent public communicator. She reaches out to, um, to media. She's helped advise movies. Um, and I, I, I think she's, um, and one of, one of the best ways I could sum up what, the way Stephanie interacts with the community is a comment from a big donor. And he said, the reason that I sponsor Stephanie's work is because I know that she interacts with the community and listens to their needs. It's not about um, prioritizing publishing papers. It's about working with us, with the community. Um, Stephanie has a, a great uh, background in, uh, she's, she's featured on Young Inventors, uh, which is a show on the ABC, and um, she's been instrumental as one of the inventors of the artificial cornea. Um, she's one of the top researchers at Save Site, and she's going to help us sort of piece together the mystery of what the Save Site Institute does. So please put your hands together for Stephanie Watson. Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome. Thanks for giving up your time to come here today. Um, thanks also for the invitation to speak and give you a bit of an idea about the Save Site. And I'm calling this talk the Save Site Institute Explained. Okay. So, first of all, if I can advance the slides, that's my. Matt, do you know how to advance the slides? Okay. Oh, there we go. So I just thought Matt's told you a little bit about me, but I thought I'd just give you a little bit more background about how I came to be at the Save Site and why it's so important um, to me. Uh, and I went to medical school. I went to Sydney University. I did a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, which is the basic training you need to do to become a doctor. But I became very much interested in, in how we're going to solve the problems for the future. And that led me to research. So I did what's called a Bachelor of Medical Science, which is an extra year of the degree. Um, and, after, and you learn during that year about the basics of how to do research. Following that, I then um, became quite interested in, um, in eye research and, and in, in helping people to see. So I went um, to two places. First of all, I went to um, Oxford 
um, University and uh, spent some time there looking at neurology. And then I went to Africa to Kenya and I worked in an eye clinic there. And that really set me on the path to thinking, wow, I want to you know, spend my career um, trying to save sight. Following that, um, at the university, I went up to Newtown one day and I met Fred Hollows there doing a book signing. And I said, um, Fred, you can you know, sign my book. I want to do, you know, become an eye doctor. And he said, why the bloody hell do you want to do that? <laughs> and I said, just sign the book. I was like a little timid medical student. I was like, no, just please sign the book. <laughs> so that's my, uh, that's my uh, book signing there. A and again, you know, it really inspired me along the path. Um, and I sort of ended up, after I'd done my eye training, thinking, you know, that the cornea was an area that I wanted to go into. Now, as you all know, you know, um, vision can be impaired from multiple parts of, eye, of the eye. Uh, and um, the cornea is one of those parts. It's the window at the front of the eye. So to um, sort of pursue this further, I went to Moorfields Eye Hospital in London, where I did a PhD. And that PhD was looking at new therapies for people with corneal blindness. But as you know, it's not just the cornea. Worldwide, there are 253 million people visually impaired and 36 million legally blind. So we need new solutions. We need to be able to save sight on a larger scale. For the cornea, it's actually the third most common cause of blindness. It's irreversible and it affects all ages. Um, for children born with visual impairment due to the cornea, they have a lifetime ahead of them of increased morbidity. And the World Health Organization has recognized it as a priority eye disease. So this is why we need places like the Safe Sight Institute. We need to be able to fight blindness not all through treating people, through research, through clinical care. Now, who we are? Well, we're part of the University of Sydney. Um, there's the Faculty of Medicine, which has now been renamed to the Faculty of, of Medicine and Health Sciences, and we're part of the discipline of ophthalmology, and we're based at the Sydney Eye Hospital. Now, um, I put this picture in here because this is apparently the world's largest hotel. Uh, and uh, it's not the first, but Sydney Medical School is actually um, the first medical school in Australia and the largest, and we're part of it. Um, it has quite a number of centres, a huge amount of staff, and it's now ranked 15th um, in the world. The discipline, the history of it, it was founded in 1977 for the Safe Side Institute. Um, and, we, sorry, the, the discipline, oh, Professor Bilson was appointed in 1977, and the institute was established in 1985. Um, we moved to the Eye Hospital in 1997. Um, and then 2009, Professor Peter McCluskey, who's here today, um, took over. And um, sorry about this, it's just a bit tricky advancing these slides. Okay, and now under um, Professor McCluskey's guidance, we're actually ranked six in the world, and that's for eye institutes. So we're doing pretty well. A little bit more about the, the eye hospital where we're based. That's basically um, dates back to 1788. Uh, and it's known as the Rum Hospital because it was built on rum money. It p provides a statewide quaternary referral centre for eye disease. So we see a lot of patients with um, complex um, eye conditions through there. But what does the Safe Sight Institute do? So that's just a little bit, bit about sort of, you know, where we sit in the structure. You know, we sit with the University of Sydney. We're based at the Safe Sight Hospital. But more important than that, you know, what do we actually do? How do we actually try to save sight? Well, as I mentioned before, we do it through research, clinical care, teaching, and community service. And I'm going to go through each of those to tell you a little bit more. So research. So basically research is finding the answers, finding the solutions, so people can um, have improved outcomes both now and in the future. And we have a number of research groups. And these are based around a number of eye conditions and diseases, but also bigger, bigger question, questions like stem cells. We try to focus on the things that cause the majority of blindness, but also conditions that aren't as common, because everyone with loss of sight deserves to have a better outcome and a better treatment. 
These are the, uh, as a summary of the various research groups that we have in the, in the Safe Site Institute. We have retina, lens, cataract, cornea, glaucoma, uveitis and ocular immunology, paediatric eye disease, ocular cancer. We're also looking um, at sort of uh, colour vision and electrophysiology. Now, if we think about research, you might think, well, it all happens in a lab. Yes, that is part of our research. We have lab research, and that's based at finding the basic mechanisms um, behind the diseases. And um, as we have, again, this is across all areas of the eye. As an example of the research that I've been involved on on this level, um, the cornea uh, is, is the eye's window. Now, it has a number of layers. Every seven to ten days, days, this top layer here is shed and replaced. And, it's done, and this happens through stem cells. So this is what a stem cell does on the cornea. It sits in this little bottom zone on the bottom layer of those cells and it divides to produce another stem cell and then some daughter cells that go across the cornea and eventually shed off the eye. So it's a bit like a garden, the front of the eye and the, and the role of the stem cells. So the stem cells are like the seeds and they provide the cells. They replenish the front of the eye. But for some patients, unfortunately, their stem cells don't work well and the front of the eye is unhealthy. This is a condition called limbal stem cell failure and what it does is result in scarring of the cornea. Now, this is a patient of mine who unfortunately... Uh, was injured by a beer line cleaner. And the front of his eye, the cornea, became vascularized due to stem cell failure. And this condition typically affects people of a young working age um, uh, group because it's often a chemical injury and it's not treatable with standard grafting. So we're trying to find the solutions to cure this condition and we've gone to the lab. We basically have set up a, a model that we can use to look closely and see, well, if we put different factors on, can we make these cells healthier? At the SAVE site, we also do a lot of clinical research. And so we do clinical trials. And these are important for determining whether a new drug or a treatment that comes out or a device actually works. We need to know those treatments are safe and effective before they reach the clinic. Um, we do clinical trials across very early um, uh, devices and drugs, and also at later stages. Uh, the clinical research also involves programs where we look at, we look at different patient groups and we see um, how we can improve their outcomes. As an example, we have the Save Site registries. Now, what is the registry and why do we need them? Well, clinical trials, some of you may or may not have been in them or been around them, but what happens in a clinical trial is you take a very standardised set of patients. We have criteria. You can only get into a trial if you, if you fulfill any of those strict criteria. And then we apply the treatments in a very standardised way. But as you know, when a treatment goes into the community, it's given to everybody. It's the real world. And in the real world, the treatments might react differently to how they do in a perfect clinical trial. So um, Professor Mark Gillies set up the Save Site registries and it now holds one of the largest treatment outcomes databases for macular disease in the world. It's also important in, uh, in establishing the safety of treatments once they're in the clinic. So this is uh, a branch of the registry that I run um, for a condition called keratoconus, which typically affects um, young adults and is progressive. They get progressive blurring of vision. And what we're doing with this registry, we're trying to find out which treatments work and which are the best treatments and when to deliver them. It's been quite effective. We are, we are collecting outcomes data at a rate of about 10% a month. Um, clinicians are able to use it to benchmark their treatments against um, other clinicians in the registry. So that way everyone can, can move closer towards providing the best care. But most importantly, we're asking patients what they think about the treatment and what are their priorities. Um, these are called patient reported outcomes and Dr. Alex Ferdi will be talking more on these later. With this registry, when patients come to the clinic, we can show them a graph of their treatment journey. We can show them what's happening with their vision and also what's happening with how they're coping with their vision 
and their life. Another example of a clinical research project um, that we have going at the SAVE site is based around corneal infection. So despite there being men, many modern antibiotics, patients still have corneal infection that can lead to blindness. In the elderly, one in 10 can lose their eye after infection. And for children, they end up with lifetime vision loss from amblyopia, which is lazy eye. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to improve outcomes. We're trying to turn this sort of outcome into this outcome. And how we're doing it is we're basically, first of all, trying to figure out, well, which bugs cause the infection? And to do this, we need to educate the registrar and training doctors on how best to take samples to identify the bugs. We're then producing guidelines to educate clinicians on the best ways to treat the condition, educating the public and the patients on, uh, on um, what's appropriate therapy. So these days, many people get chloramphenicol if they have a red eye. So they go to the chemist and the chemist will give them chloramphenicol. But for patients with corneal infection, this can actually lead them to have a delay in presenting and also a worse outcome. So um, we're trying to educate um, the public uh, and our patients about the signs of keratitis and what chloramphenicol should be used for. We're also improving, trying to improve the patient experience. So for patients with keratitis, they get admitted to hospital and they're given eye drops hourly, day and night, um, for two days, which can be fairly traumatic and often they're admitted at short notice. And so one of our research projects recently went and asked the patients that were in hospital um, how they found the experience. They've, a lot of them found it quite difficult being told at short notice that they had to be um, you know, admitted to hospital. Uh, one patient had parked their car at a train station um, come some hours to Sydney and then be, been told, look, you have to come into hospital straight away and the ho their car was still at the train station. Um, and then when the patients get discharged, often they're not sure about things like whether they can drive, when they'll see again. So we're reaching out to the patients to ask them, what, what is your experience of care and how can we improve it? Um, clinical care. So the SAFE site also provides clinical care. And many of you might be patients of the Save Site Clinic. And we cover all subspecialty areas and we have investigations that are quite specialised and not available in um, practice outside the Save Site. So one of these areas is electrophysiology and that's important in diagnosing um, retinal diseases. We have multidisciplinary clinics and this is um, a clinic run by Professor Peter McCluskey uh, and this combines both ophthalmologists um, and a paediatric rheumatologist to ensure that we're delivering the best care. So um, in this clinic, I have a role in uh, looking at the corneal problems. Uh, and part of this is, you know, in ophthalmology, we're very subspecialised. Um, we have corneal doctors, we have retinal doctors. But um, as many of you all know, often you can have a problem in more than one area as a patient. And we're looking at ways to try to make sure we bring that care together. So people aren't coming to the hospital for multiple clinics at multiple different times. Also, in some con eye conditions, th there's effects on the body. And particularly for children, we need to make sure that their general health care is also the highest quality. Teaching. So we do a lot of teaching. And this is really key because to deliver the care that we need for the future and to continue to save sight, we need to have an, a new generation of experts coming through. We need, to, we need to increase and expand the eye expert or eye care workforce. So we teach medical students. We teach eye registrars for the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Ophthalmologists. Um, we teach other ophthalmologists. And we do teaching for ophthalmologists that come from other countries uh, and then go back to their country and to provide specialist care. In the last um, five years, I've trained people from England, from Malaysia, from um, Vietnam, um, from Austria. Uh, it's really quite mixed. And so the safe side is, is improving the, the eye care of, of um, patients across, around the world. Nurses we train, orthoptists and other doctors. 
um, we train students. And this was a particularly proud moment for me on Thursday night. Um, myself and um, Professor Frank Logovic, both with the Save Site Institute, were nominated as Supervisors of the Year at the University of Sydney. And uh, um, our students here, uh, Maria, Alex, Daisy, um, and uh, Frank's student here, we all gathered together at the university in traditional student form and had beers and pizza. So <laughs> to, to celebrate, <laughs> which, is, uh, which was nice. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that's really important. I, I think having this link to the next generation, um, providing for the future is really important. And um, it's really, this is a, was a very proud moment because it shows that after I've sort of finished and retired, there'll be people there that will bring up and continue the work. Um, and we're the largest training scheme for eye doctors in Australia. Okay. This is an example of, of a, a student um, working at the Safe Site in research, Annette Hoskins. Um, she has obtained NHMRC funding, and so that's a very prestigious type of medical research funding. It's the National Health and Medical Research Council. And she's looking at ocular trauma. Because trauma is actually the second most common cause of corneal blindness. And the tragic thing is that 90% is preventable. So she's working on an international study, which we've called iGATES. Um, stands for International Globe and Anaxal Trauma Epidemiology Study. We just needed to get the I in there to make it modern and trendy. And the, <laughs> what we're trying to do is find out, well, why people are getting eye trauma. And uh, we've found out some simple things, like a lot of people aren't wearing eye goggles, you know, unfortunately, in the workplace. Um, in, we're, we're collaborating with countries like Singapore and India, and there they've got huge problems with firework injuries. And so what we need to do to solve ocular trauma is not just do the research, but we need to change policies and we need to advocate for those policies once they're changed. Um, community service. Another part of this is the eye bank, and this is providing corneal tissue for corneal transplantation. And this tissue goes out across New South Wales, um, and the ACT. It's used to, um, for surgery, but also used for research. But another community service is, edu is, is again, education. I alluded to this when I spoke about chloramphenicol. Now, uh, another area where we've found um, uh, there needs to be education of the profession uh, and the community and the public is stem cells. I was just speaking um, a couple of days ago at the American Academy in Chicago in a stem cell session. And the theme there was that basically stem cells hold a lot of hope, but there's also a bit of hoax. Um, and we need to be able to ensure that people are actually getting real stem cell therapies. Uh, in America, um, there were patients that received stem cell therapies injected into their eyes and they went blind. They thought they were in a clinical trial they weren't. Um, because people want hope, sometimes they seek treatments that, um, that don't work or even worse, put them at risk. And unfortunately, this is now the case with stem cells. There are unregulated clinical trials, um, there are expensive treatments, and for some of them there's no evidence that they work, and some of them have been shown to be harmful. So we've put together this position statement um, to educate the profession. Uh, but we've also produced a pamphlet to educate patients and the community about whether they should have a stem cell treatment. Um, and this leaflet uh, says, look, look, basically as a patient or someone thinking about a stem cell treatment, you need to get some more information. You need to ask these questions. You need to find out if the stem cell treatment has been um, trialled and whether it works. We're also getting our message out to the public. This is one example of it. Um, in my practice, I came across a number of children that unfortunately had lost sight from vitamin A deficiency. And this was through a poor diet. So they were basically eating chips and Coke. Uh, and, and this was in, in suburban Sydney. And this, ch this um, child here, Cian Moore, at the time was in, from Perth. And they flew all the way to Sydney because he was progressively going blind and, and nobody knew what it was. They thought, look, maybe he needs a stem cell treatment. 
So he ended up in my clinic and uh, I looked at his eyes and I thought, my gosh, your eyes look similar to what I saw in Africa. You know, you have vitamin A deficiency, which shouldn't really be occurring in Australia because, you know, supposedly we have good nutrition. It's a disease of malnutrition. Um, but when I asked him what he ate, he, he basically had only eaten chips and Coke, you know, for quite some years. Um, and no, he'd seen multiple medical professionals and nobody had asked him what he ate. So we put this story out there and it had a combined reach of over 8 million in social media. Recently, his story has been featured in a film called Vitamania that I've been advising on about the sense and nonsense of vitamins. And what it really highlighted is, is that, as, you know, um, that any patient with whatever condition, we still need to go back and think about simple things such as diet. We need to ensure we have the right diet for our eye health but also our general health. So where are we going? Um, well, at the moment, we're number six. It's always better to be number one. And if you can't be number one, you've got to be number five. But it depends how many children you have. So, <laughs> so if you've got three like me, then you've got to have you know, equal threes as number one. Um, but you know, we really want to, um, we want to improve what we're doing. Um, we want to stay ahead of the game. And how we're doing this is, is through collaborations. So we're reaching out beyond our walls to the world and locally. But most importantly, we need you. We need the community. We need the patients to let us know, um, you know what we're doing and whether we're heading in the right direction. So tomorrow, for the safe site, we're going to continue with the innovation. We're going to look towards developing new therapies. We're going to educate and improve practice. We're going to seek partnerships. And the eye experts that we've trained, I hope, will become part of these networks of the future. And we're also going to look at policy in order to transform lives. But most importantly, we're going to seek to have better patient outcomes. We're going to seek to deliver treatments and outcomes that are meaningful for the community and for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. That was really appreciated. And uh, congratulations on being the Supervisor of the Year. I know a couple of um, Professor Watson's students, they all speak very highly of you. So, um, and that's really important because, you know, I know you said when you retire, uh, I know just looking at you, I, I assume that's some decades off. Um, but uh, what I was going to say is um, the, um, I, I think it's great that we've got, um, you, know, you know, we're one of the leading institutes training up people from all over the world and people traveling all over the world to learn from us. I think it's great. And it really goes to what the Safe Side Institute's all about. It's really, I mean, these are high stakes um, clinical treatments and you want to work with people that you can trust. And it's good to see that we can work with some of the leaders in the world. Um, as part of our theme today, we are um, talking about inspiring us and we're going to try something um, um, a little bit different. We've got Jan McLeod. Now, Jan um, has 20 years' experience as senior management and she's worked uh, with some very high performance.